ethics. It came from the word ethos, means custom or character. It is a branch of philosophy that studies the rightness and wrongness of the human action. If you do all good things, that is ethics. Example is not stealing money or things that is not yours because if you do that, you will receive a punishment. Now, there are three things that cannot be an ethical standard when associating ethics when speak the rightness or wrongness of a human action. First is the law. It cannot be an ethical standard for the law does not protect every victim. The law only makes judgments based on evidence. It only what to avoid but cannot tell what to pursue. Second is religion as it is complex. We have different belief and faith that we follow. In Islam, having four wives is allowed, but in Christian, it is not. Third is the culture. We came from different communities. We have different cultural practices that are unfamiliar to other cultures. We do have the called the cultural relativism. It's the view that ethical and social standards reflect the cultural context from which they are derived. Example, in India, before British rule, there was a custom called Suti. When a man died, his wife was burned alive with her husband's body, acceptable in their culture, not in ours. And remember, we are in no position to render that it is wrong because it is their culture. Now, to differ what is ethics and what is morality, ethics is a map of how one makes choices. Morality is an established code that can be used to judge behavior. One example can be found in the medical field. In most parts of the world, a doctor may not euthanize a patient's request as per ethical standards for health professionals. However, the same doctor may personally believe in a patient's right to die as per the doctor's own morality. Therefore, ethics is a science of morals while morality is the practice of ethics. Utilitarianism, an ethical theory founded by Jeremy Bentham and developed and popularized by John Stuart Mill. Founded in the principle of utility that adheres to the belief that an act is good or morally right if it promotes happiness and bad or immoral if it tends to produce pain. A utilitarian would not care whether an action is done out of deception lies or manipulation as long as it produces maximum benefits to many people because the key principle of utilitarianism is happiness. For example, condemning a terrorist to death is morally right. For the utilitarian, this action produces equal benefits or greatest happiness to the greatest of number of people concerned. Now for Jeremy Bentham, Happiness is simply the absence of pain. He introduced the philosophic calculus, also called as utility calculus or hedonistic calculus, that measures the degree of happiness or pleasure that a specific action may produce. For the philosophic calculus formula, happiness minus pain equals balance. For Betham, balance is the basis of the morality of an action. For example, 12 pleasures minus 6 pains equals 6. If the balance is in favor of pleasure, it is morally right. Now, another example is 5 pleasures minus 20 pains equals 15. If the balance is in favor of pain, then the action is morally right. However, John Stuart Mill disagrees with Bentham. We cannot calculate the amount of pleasure or pain that an act produces. The basis of morality is the majority of the people that attains happiness. Example in Should You Kill the Fat Man? A utilitarian moralist would suggest that the proper action is to kill the fat man, thereby saving five other lives because the sum total of happiness is greater in the outcome. Natural law ethics, or also called as domestic ethics, a popular name attributed to the model of ethics developed by St. Thomas Aquinas, a philosopher in medieval period that focused on religion. In natural law ethics, reason is the source of the moral law. It directs us towards the good, 
which is the ultimate goal of the person's action. To do good and avoid evil, which is the basic goal of the natural law ethics. According to Aquinas, we are naturally good. The question is, how do we know that a person is acting good? An act is morally right if it is then in accordance with the moral law. Now what is moral law? Reason is the source of moral law. The moral law is the dictate of reason. Aquinas says that the moral law comes from God's eternal law that was revealed in the divine law that expressed in human nature which is to do good and avoid evil. Now how do we know that one's action obeys conscience? If it satisfies the threefold natural inclination of the human person. First is the self-preservation. To take care of one's health or not to kill oneself in danger. Example is to eat healthy, sleep at least 7 hours, and do not suicide and do not kill someone. Second is just dealing with others. Treat others with the same respect that we accord ourselves. Thus for Aquinas, all forms of inhumanity such as exploitation, seduction, deception, manipulation, cheating, kidnapping, murder, and intimidation are absolutely wrong too. In terms of propagation of human species, as per Aquinas, the reproductive organ is designed by nature to reproduce and propagate the human species. Any act of intervention, therefore, that restates the reproductive organ's care purpose is unnatural and thus immoral. This explains why, according to natural law ethics, masturbating is unethical. Now, there are four principles of double effect. First one is the action intended must be good in itself, or at least morally indifferent. Otherwise, the act is evil at the very outright. The second one is the goal effect must follow the action, or at least as immediately as the evil effect or the good and evil effects must occur simultaneously. 3. The foreseen evil effect should not be intended or approved, but merely permitted to occur. And number 4. There must be a proportionate and sufficient reason for an action to be considered morally right. Example is removing a cancerous uterus of a pregnant woman, and it is morally right. Now there are good and evil effects in it. The evil is it kills the uterus. The good is it saves the mother's life. It satisfies the principle number one, which is the intention is good. The intention of removing the cancerous uterus is good in itself. We may even view it as morally indifferent. Now, it satisfies the principle number two, the good and evil effects. Because of the good effect that is recovery of a pregnant woman, follows the action immediately and even if the fetus dies after the removal of the cancerous uterus, at least these evil effects occur simultaneously, of course, with a good effect. Now, it satisfied principle number three. The abortion, the death of fetus was not intended. It was just allowed to happen. Now, it satisfied the principle number four. The su sufficient reason for allowing the evil effect, which is the abortion or the killing of the fetus to happen. Needless to say, if we don't remove it, we both don't save lives. Eutology An ethical theory An action is considered morally good because of some characteristic of the action itself, not because the product of action is good. Just like animals, we humans are sentient organisms. Now, humans are higher than animals because we have rational will or the free choice. Now, what is rational will? Rational will is we can think and reason now. We can construct ideas and thoughts. We have the ability to enact our thoughts and identify our obligations and duties. Now, we have also the sensible impulse or the animal choice. Now, this is our bodily source and able to read, eat, and drink. And we can act different emotions here. Autonomy. This is how you govern yourself. When you grow up, 
you will have a proper autonomy and properly used if it is under the guidance of your rational will and not your sensible impulse. Why? Because if we use our sensible impulse, we can act directly without think and reason out. Hitonomy is the condition of acting on desires which are not legislated by reason. Let's see an example. The law says don't steal. If you don't steal because you believe it's wrong, that's autonomy at work. But if the only reason you don't steal is because you're afraid of being caught, that's an external force pursuing you or hedonomy. Virtue ethics, a moral theory that focuses on the development of the virtuous character, a behavior showing high moral standards developed by Aristotle and other ancient Greeks. This character-based approach to morality assumes that we acquire virtue through practice. By practicing being honest, brave, just generous, and so on. A person develops an honorable and moral character. A virtue is a thought or action that is righteous or of high moral ground. Example, you might think your grandfather's wisdom as a virtue. According to Aristotle, by owning virtuous habits, people will likely make the right choice when faced with ethical challenges. By living virtuously, we can achieve eudaimonia. The ultimate goal of reason, the highest good, therefore is a combination of virtue and this calls the summum bonum. Now, there are criteria to reach the ultimate happiness according to Aristotle, and that is final and self-sufficient. Means, it is not temporary. At wala ka nang hahanap hanapi pa. So, virtue ethics helps us understand what it means to be a virtuous human being and it gives us a guide for living life without giving us specific rules for resolving ethical dilemmas. Good day, this is Arjul Karel Iterpatosa, a first year from Bachelor of Science in Sustainable Community Development. And this is the recap that I had learned for the entire lesson in the subject Check 107's Ethics Goodbye and thank you.